Alrighty. So I promised you a couple other uh, uh, examples of derivatives in class because we didn't quite get to them, and so here we are. And I guess we'll just get started. Remember that whenever we're looking for a derivative, we're looking to find this limit, right? This limit where we're taking our function evaluated at x plus h, that's a little bit offset from x, minus our function at x divided by h, and this essentially is looking at that slope function, which tells us the slope of that secant line, um, and as h goes to zero, meaning what is the instantaneous slope, how do these average slopes go to the instantaneous slope of our function at x, right? So the function that we'll be taking a look at first here is um, f of x equaling 1 over x squared plus 1. So it's a rational function, a little bit different than things we've looked at before. First thing you always need to find after knowing your function is everything else that you don't know in this definition of a derivative, which is really just x plus h composed into f. So we'll write that down as well. So we're going to put x plus h instead of x. Still 1 over x plus h instead of x. We'll foil that out. Still on screen, we are good. So this is x squared plus 2, x h plus h squared plus 1. All dividing 1 still. And then we just take what we know and we plug it into this derivative definition. Right? So we now have every piece. We know we have this here. I know we have this here. h is just some sort of dummy thing that goes down to 0 anyway, so we don't need to worry about that at this moment. So let's go. The limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h, x squared plus 2x, h plus h squared plus 1, minus f of x, which is 1 over x squared plus 1. All of this is divided by h. At this point, um, we need to find this difference on top, which means we need to find a common denominator for these two fractions. And as I've said before, when you've got sort of algebraic things like this in the denominators, uh, when you've got polynomials in the denominators, uh, sometimes, you know, it's worth it to factor and see what common factors there are, but of, at other times, you're just going to take the entire thing uh, and you're going to say, I'm just going to multiply both of these together. And that's a common denominator, maybe not the least common denominator, but it is a common denominator. So we're going to do that here. And we've got the limit still, h going to zero, we have two fractions, a big fraction on top divided by h. The new denominator, like I said, is the product of these two, x squared plus 2, xh plus h squared plus 1, times x squared plus 1. On top now, we had x squared plus 1 coming on over here. We're subtracting then this denominator from over here, okay, and we're going to get a few terms that cancel out quite nicely. So let's see what we get. We get x squared minus x squared, we get 1 minus 1, and that gives us this. Uh, I'm also going to Bring the h up here by multiplying on top and bottom by this 1 over h term. That's just 1 over h divided by 1 over h, which is 1. Multiplication by 1 does nothing. But this is going to simplify this sort of compound fraction into a single fraction. Let's get through the compound nature of it. So here's this. And this now equals the limit as h goes to 0 of... What's left over? We've got, but I didn't cancel this out. Canceled out the negative sign. Forgive me. 1 minus 1. Okay. We've got left up top 2xh plus h squared divided by this nasty looking denominator x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 1 times 
x squared plus 1 times h. We notice up top that both these terms have an h in them, a factor of h, so we're going to factor that out. And I'll just do that on the fly. Oops, I'll just take that away. Okay, so the h squared became an h after factoring it out. 2x, 8 times h became just 2x after we take out the h. And the reason we do that in the simplification process is just because we've got an h now on bottom and on top. That'll cancel out. Which brings us to where we're at here. So, you know, we can maybe press forward from here um, and just sort of see what we've got. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we can definitely just proceed from here. So, let's look at what we have. We have on top, a line, 2x plus h, right? h is just some number. You can take limits of lines, right? In fact, they're continuous. They're polynomial. This is a polynomial. So you can just plug in 0 for h up top here. So we know we can find the limit of the top on its own. How about the limit of the bottom? Can we find that by itself? Well, again, this is just a polynomial. Does it evaluate to 0 when we plug in 0? No, it's x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1. So we can, in fact, take the limit of this divided by the limit of this. Uh, because of the limit of each, we can find, and the limit of the denominator is not 0. Okay, so there's some of the limit laws that we have. So the quotient law says if you can find this, and you can find this limit. And if this limit is not 0, then just go ahead and take the quotient of limits. Each of those are polynomials in x and in h, which means they're continuous, which means we can just plug them in, plug in the limit 0 to them, and what does that give us? Up top, we get 2x. On bottom, we get x squared plus 1, because this 2x times h goes to 0, and this h squared goes to 0, times x squared plus 1. That has nothing to do with h. So it's x squared plus 1 again, which means in the denominator we have x squared plus 1 squared. And I forgot some negative signs along the way, and nobody screamed at me because, uh, well, there's nobody here to scream at me. <laughs> so here, I forgot a negative sign right here. This needs to distribute to the 2xh and to the h squared. Which means right here, this is actually a negative 2x plus h. Which means right here, this is actually the opposite of this limit. Which means this right here is actually negative 2x. Okay? So that's the first limit that uh, we'll go ahead and get started with. I'm going to give you another one here in just a minute. But I've got to erase the board. So I'm going to use some magic here with YouTube, I guess. Or maybe it won't be magical at all. Where's the pause button? Hmm. I guess I'll just stop it.